Assalamu alaikum dear friends I hope you will be fine in this video I am going to introduce you uh, on the prestigious scholarship that is known as Hong Kong PID fellowship scheme so I would like to introduce the guy that has uh, in the previous scheme that this guy has selected so I hope the most probable questions will be quite beneficial for you so before going to ask these probable questions I would like to introduce this guy so please introduce yourself first yeah, greetings to all during the difficult situation in COVID. Uh, hopefully, you all is fine. I am Efimi Asi from Bangladesh, and I was awarded the HKPSF in the previous year. And I did my uh, DVM, that is Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, from Chittagong Veterinary and Inverness University, and later on uh, completed my masters from the same university. And I I was uh, awarded the fellowship on the previous year and uh, that's all about me okay so um, as our fellowship scheme has announced so i would like to know that what is the last deadline for application submission the last day for the application submission is first uh, of december and uh, before the submission the last day i would like to say all of the prospective students to apply early and the early bird have all the time have some benefit. Okay, so the, the most important thing is what is the eligibility criteria for this prestigious scholarship? It's the most important uh, question. Uh, for me, uh, you can search in the website, but that was theoretical. And there is so many, uh, so many things in the website, but in a practical sense, I would like to say that uh, uh, the most important thing is you have completed your masters and at least you have one or two impact factor journals publications and if you have a high CGPA in your undergraduate level that would be a great positive uh, for your uh, um, selection in the HKPSF. Now with that, there's another most important question is the, how we can approach the professor, how we can email them. So what is the main criteria that we must need to mention before sending e email? Yeah, most of the uh, prospective students have this kind of questions. And I would like to say that at the very beginning, uh, you should have uh, completely review the prospective supervisor or faculty member's CV. And how can you get the CV? You can get the CV in the website. You also found your uh, the prospective supervisors, uh, students, previous students, their publications, and uh, how many labs they have. Um, uh, is there uh, co continuing publications in your supervisor? And those kind of things you can easily access through the website. And the most important thing is uh, how you mail them how you can choose the supervisor at the very beginning you should uh, optimize or you should select in which topic you are interested in for your higher study and you need to be straightforward simple in your email so that the supervisor will get you very short time uh, very short time there is one minute in your email but uh, if uh, there is a long email most of the cases they don't have enough time to read all these uh, large email and you should uh, write your uh, CGPA if you have any research experience if you have any recent uh, journal papers you should write those kind of things in your uh, email and if not uh, more than 10 or 15 lines that would be a larger one. 10 or 15 lines would be great. Yeah, after sending uh, an email, most of the uh, professors send you a positive reply. But uh, along with that, they also uh, demand the research proposal. So if any professor demand the research proposal, then what are the main key points that we must need to consider during making a research proposal? Yes, it's an important question. And most of the cases, the student uh, have no like me uh, we don't have enough knowledge about how to write the research proposal 
But as per my little knowledge, I would like to say these four important topics you should consider whenever you write a research proposal. At the very beginning, you need to write your objective first. Very straightforward objectives at the very beginning. Secondly, you, write, you should write the methodology. How to write the methodology and which method should be inserted. That would be more main focus for your uh, research proposal. Third one, the references you took. In most of the cases, a student took the references from lower impact factor journals and lower and sometimes very few citation journals. So I would like to say that you should choose the references from a good journals. They have higher citations. That would be a great impression for your CV. And later on, uh, you should write and you should consider that one that which will be your research impact in the scientific community if you have a lower uh, scientific impact on your work in most of the cases the professor uh, will not reply in your uh, research proposal and uh, one more thing in most of the cases the professors whenever uh, want to give him a precious proposal that means he will examine you two or three things your uh, written skills your uh, communication skills as well and how you made yourself competent enough to go into his lab so in that case uh, i would like to say that you consider the topics straightforward and your research proposal will not exceed more than two or three pages Okay, and other important questions uh, that every person consider even before approaching um, or even before applying on any scholarship. That is basically uh, how much amount they are offering. So this is an important question for all of us. So how much amount they are offering for this Hong Kong fellowship scheme? Yeah, it's a prestigious fellowship as you know and all the viewers uh, you also may know about it and the monthly honorium is almost 27,000 almost 27,000 Hong Kong dollar and it's like 3,500 uh, US dollar so it's a huge amount of money in uh, most of the countries like uh, in the Indian subcontinent so it's a huge money in your opinion in my opinion actually okay and um, uh, how many uh, selected candidates how, i mean to say like for this scholarship how many candidates are selected for each year total number of 300 will be awarded and uh, it it may be varied in the latter stages but here we can uh, we have the uh, news that only 300 and it's uh, divided into all over the country and all over the world actually sorry for my uh, spelling yeah. mistake so uh, it's a uh, 300 and these 300 will be all over the world so you have to be competent enough to compete yourself into another student from another part of the world okay so if we will submit our application before the deadline that is uh, 1 september so uh, sorry for the deadline for what? First December. First December. So if you will submit our application first December, before first December, then after how many months the result will be announced? After the initial, uh, the final result will be published in uh, April 2022. But uh, there is something uh, I should say that if uh, the university will not offer the offer letter to you, then it's completely uh, in vain if you selected for the SQPSF and most probably you are will not selected for the SQPSF as well. So at the very beginning you should uh, you should have uh, concentrated yourself for the professor and the departmental uh, selection and later on uh, you will give the chance to get into the SQPSF. So at the very beginning you need to be selected from the university and from the university department and later on the selection procedure is not in your hand it's completely on government level so your turn is that to get one offer letter from the department and later on it's completely uh, on 
not your hand is completed on the RGC or the university. Okay, thank you very much for your precious time. That was the most probable questions that comes in our mind. However, any other questions that comes in your mind, and then you can ask any questions without any hesitation in the comment section. And I will be very happy to make another video or I will be very happy to answer all those questions in the answer section. So thank you so much. Please like and subscribe my channel. See you in next time.